Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set up your Gridseed Script ASIC Miner. So it comes with a built in heatsink and a big fan at the bottom. So when it's running, it's actually really cool. It has five chips inside it, five Gridseed chips, and it can mine Bitcoin and Litecoin at the same time. There are three different mining modes. The first mode is script only mode. When you're only mining script or Litecoin, the hash rate is 300 to 400 kilohashes per second. The second mode is Bitcoin only mode. So when you're only mining Bitcoin, the hash rate is 11.2 gigahashes per second. The third and final mode is dual mining, that is Litecoin and Bitcoin mode. When you do this, the hash rate is 300 kilohashes per second for Litecoin and 8 gigahashes per second for Bitcoin. So today I'm going to show you how to set up the miner using script only mode. So mining only Litecoin. So you'll need your miner. You'll need a mini USB cable. And you'll need a charger. So it takes 12 volt 5 amp charger which you can get on eBay, or if you buy it from my shop, then you get all these things together. So the first thing we have to do is we have to download the driver software. So go to the link in media file and download the, the driver. Okay, open the zip file and extract the VCP setup file. So if you're using Windows 32-bit, then use this one. If you're using Windows 86-bit or 64-bit, then you use this setup. So I'm using this one. So I'll extract it. So extract it to my desktop. Okay. So open the setup file for the driver, click yes, and install the driver. This will allow your miner to communicate with the COM port correctly. Okay, click next. Now it's installing. Okay, and it's finished. So when you know it's correct, it'll have a tick here and it says STM microelectronics ready to use. So click finish. Good. Now the next thing you need to do is you need to download the special modified version of CPU Miner. So again, it's in the description. So go to the download link on media file and download the modified version of CPU Miner. At the moment, only CPU Miner is supported for the Gridseed script ASIC Miner. But later on, um, BFG Miner is under development. So that will be out in a couple of weeks. So download CPU Miner. It's only a small file, 1.3 megabytes. Open it. Okay. Extract it to your location. I'll pick the desktop again for now. Okay. Okay, so here's my CPU miner. Boom. So now the next thing you need to do is you need to plug in your miner, okay? So first, 
what you need to do is um, plug in the power first. So I'll plug in my power cord, turn it on. So find your power cord here, Just at the side there, plug it in. Ooh, and it will start coming alive. So it starts humming away. Starts making a little noise. The fan's working there at the bottom. Next, take your mini USB cable and plug this into the miner. So again, you can see the mini USB plug there. Just plug it in. Might be a little bit stiff, so okay, plug that in. Plug this in to your USB port or into your computer. If you want to use more than one or more than two, then I suggest you get a USB hub because you need something with a little bit of power, a little bit of juice, okay? Or else it won't hash properly. So I plug that in. Okay, now it will say driver installed. So wait for it to install you know it's installed correctly when it says stm micro electronics virtual com port is installed then what you need to do now is open up device manager go to device manager so you just go start Type device manager there. Okay, open Windows Device Manager. Go to ports and look for your STM Micro Electronics Virtual Com and make a note of the COM port. So here you can see it actually says COM67. So sometimes the miner has problems when it's communicating with COMs which are over number 10. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go properties, port settings, advance, and we're going to change the COM port number, okay? Because sometimes when the COM port number is over 10 or over 12, for some reason the miner will have some errors. So just in case you are getting a COM port error when you run the CPU miner software, um, just go here and change this to a com which isn't in use okay so let's pick one that's not in use so a look so I'm gonna pick com2 it's not in use okay, click OK OK so I've now changed it to com2 make a note of the com number anyway because you're gonna need that when you run the miner now click close now go back to your CPU miner software. So open up the CPU miner folder. Find your start mining bat file. Right click edit. Okay. So here we have all the settings. So remember the com number, my com number was two. So you need to change the com number to your com number, okay? So it'll be different for every miner you plug in. So my one was 67, but I changed it to two. So I'm gonna change that to two. The frequency, this controls how fast the miner will mine. So its default is 600, but um, 750 is fine. You can even push it to 800 or 850. But be careful, the higher you push it, um, the more hardware errors you will get, but the faster the miner will, will run as well. So I've heard that if you have it at 850, you can get about 400 kilohashes per second out of the miner. But for today, to start off with, I'm just going to set it to 800. Then go here after dash O, put in your mining pool settings. I'm using we mine LTC. Semi then after the colon, write down the port of your mining pool. After dash U, write down your username. My one's iboot.1 and dash P your password. So that's all fine. Click save. Close that now. So now we can run it. Double click. 
it will open up CPU Miner and boom there we go it started mining so you'll know it's working when you get the green writing and underneath it will say accepted one of one 100% uh, yeah so you might notice here that it says 0, 0.00 kilo hashes per second so that is not in fact the correct speed and um, the modified version of CPU Miner doesn't actually show the correct speed it's just because um, at the moment um, this hardware is just so new they've had to modify an old version of CPU Miner to make it work so after they modified it they can't get it to, to show the actual hashing speed so if you want to find the hashing speed of your miner you'll have to go to your mining pool so my mining pool was uh, www.weminltc.com so just log into your mining pool and then check under your worker settings and you'll be able to see the hash rate speed there but yeah now it's happily hashing away there it goes it's mining so every time a share is accepted the red light flashes and the green light just flashes every second on and off like that to show that it's working and there we go now it's hashing away happily so it's already found five shares and if I go to my mining pool so I open up my web browser go to weminltc.com okay put underneath my worker so at first you'll see the killer hashes are a bit low, it says only 40 killer hashes per second but it takes about 20 minutes for the worker to update so we'll look back in 20 minutes and we'll be able to see the actual real hash rate of the miner so now it's been 20 minutes later so let's check up on the miner so there it is happily mining away, buzzing. As you can see, it's completely cold. This is in Litecoin only mode, not hot at all. It runs completely cool. And let's check out how many shares has it accepted. So after 20 minutes, it's actually accepted 114 shares. And now if we go to our WeMine LTC pool, let's check it out. So go my workers. Wow, and then click out the hash speed. Check out the hash speed. It is 362 kilo hashes per second. That's pretty sweet. So there you go. Um, and that is running on what frequency did we set it? We set the frequency on, let's check our bat file, 800, 800. So that's on 800. So there you go, 362 kilo hashes per second. Beautiful. So, um, that's all for today. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to make it run in Bitcoin and Litecoin mode. So that's dual mining mode. So thank you for watching. And I'm selling these on eBay, Amazon, and on my online shop, my online store, uh, www.iboot.com. So thank you very much for watching and happy mining.